Joel Davis is known by many for his role in the burning of an iconic Madison County Bridge. This is a video of the 19-year-old at a court hearing back in February. Now, what many don't know about was his long battle with depression and guilt afterwards. And tragically, in September, Joel took his own life. After his passing, family and friends held a candlelight vigil in his honor. Local 5 was the only TV station invited, and tonight Joel's parents spoke to me for the first time since their son's passing in a very emotional sit-down interview. And now, nearly three months later, Tanya and Randy are still overcome with sadness. It's grief for the loss of their son and for what happened to the bridge. They hope people can look past what Joel did and see him as the teenager who was trying to do right and learn from his mistakes. He was the best son any mom could ask for. Growing up, Joel Davis was known as a silly sweet boy with the biggest heart. He was just, would do anything for anybody. Joel was born and raised in Norwalk and dreamt of being a Marine. To go, yeah, I looked up to him every bit as much as he looked up to me. Joel was always there for his friends and helped many of them through dark times. From the outside, Joel seemed okay. Really wise for a 19-year-old. But inside, there was unbearable pain. His parents had no idea how bad his depression was. 36 hours before he did this, we had a conversation, our last convers real conversation, talked for an hour and a half, and he brought up his uncle's suicide uh, seven years previous and how bad it hurt the family and, and everything and, and said, you know, I would never, ever do that, right? I would never hurt you guys like that. And I'm like, well, I certainly hope not. I said that I couldn't lose you. I lose sleep every night thinking about what has happened and what I've done to the people of Madison County and how I've wounded my family name. But then in September, Joel took his own life. I don't understand how you go from that conversation to, to you know, to only 36 hours later to drive out in the country with a gun. To lose something that is 50% of your DNA, something that you've spent 19 years investing in, uh, all your hopes and dreams are wrapped up in. Those are, you know, I love the way the Bible describes children as arrows that are shot into a time that you'll never see, and my arrow's broken. Tanya and Randy knew Joel's life was forever changed after a night of drinking. The number of sirens, I knew something very bad had gone wrong. In April 2017, Joel and his two friends, Alexander Hoff and Olivia Bergman, decided to light an iconic Madison County bridge on fire, an act Joel's parents still struggle to comprehend. So trying to wrap your mind around how my child ended up in this predicament in the first place, I, I'm still not there. I, I've still not made peace with that. Joel spent 13 days in jail before being released on bond. As he awaited his sentence, he went back to high school and faced constant bullying. There were some pretty bad things, uh, calling for our home to be burned down, calling for him to be doused in fire and set on fire, uh, calling for him to be hung from the Madison County Bridge Festival. Those attacks weighed heavily on Joel and the rest of the family, but Tanya and Randy encouraged Joel to move on and learn from his mistakes. I just wanted him to get to that point of forgiving himself. In February 2018, Joel pleaded guilty to arson in the second degree and made this public apology. I accept full responsibility for my actions and the consequences that follow with them. And I deeply apologize to both the people of Madison County and Winterset and the state of Iowa. The Davises thought this statement was a step in the right direction for Joel's healing. The teenager also wrote this blog about his battles with shame and suicidal thoughts. My huge regret is I didn't read it. I didn't read it till after he died. As a mom, with him living right there and us having such a close relationship, you know, then I start thinking back to every single thing. Was I just blind? Did I just choose not to see something? Or was he just, did he just hide it so, so well? In the months since Joel's death, Randy and Tanya are thankful for all the support they've had from family and friends. It's a wound that it will never get better. It's never going to heal. No one can make it better. All they can do is be there. They say their son's life was worth far more than a bridge. But from the bottom of their hearts, they apologize for what happened. We are so sorry. We, we are incredibly heartbroken over it. This family will always have a missing piece. But after all of this, they want to make sure no one 
feels like Joel did. We're all human. We all make mistakes. And people need to remember that because they're going to make mistakes too. You know, we all are. And we all need to be there for each other, not, not tear each other down. You know, not, not leave somebody to where they feel the only choice they have is to end it all. Joel's organs were donated, and that's very rare for a suicide. His family takes comfort in knowing he was able to save the lives of others. We want to remind anyone at home how serious an issue mental health is. If you or anyone you know is struggling, please call the number on your screen.